Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. <laughs> Can you guys believe that this is episode 48? Seriously, this is like, we are almost to the two year mark. Two years that I've been showing up every single week and talking about a topic for 30 minutes. How does it get better than that? Oh my God, hi. Hey, 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 you guys. Well, as always, I'm super excited about this week's topic. How you doing? Hi, Guy. Hi, Michael. Hi. Oh, hi, Zara. Hi, Kathy. Nice to see you guys. Man, shout it out in the comments. Where are you guys from? Where are you watching from? Are you watching from your pillow? From your bed? From your car? Are you in your living room? Tell me where you are right now. Are you naked? These are important things I need to know. I am not naked. I'm mostly naked. Not really. Okay, let's get right down to it, shall we? So I called this week's topic, oh yeah, tag a friend that you think would enjoy watching this. We're going to talk this week about are you surviving your finances or are you transforming them? You know, pretty relevant for most of us. Hi, Marta. Hi, Bronwyn. This is um, this topic of surviving versus thriving has been, you guys are, oh my god, so cool. You're in South Africa, you're on your balcony. Now this is going to distract me. All we're going to do is chit chat the whole show. I can already tell. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I have to tell you something. So I found this incredible transcription software. So as I talk, it's transcribing the show. So you guys, we're about to have printed material from all of my shows, just so you know, books are on their way. Yeah, near San Diego. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm gonna chat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, while you guys are telling me where you are, I'm gonna tell you actually what we're talking about today. Okay, so we're talking about, are you surviving your finances or are you transforming them? I had the distinct privilege of being in a three-day body class this past weekend in Calgary with Shannon O'Hara. And Shannon is one of those access consciousness facilitators that for me uh, creates the most change in my world. And it's because she doesn't buy anybody's bullshit, especially her own. <laughs> and so when, when you are standing in front of her or you are on a telecall with her asking a question, hi Hannah, hi Gabrielle, um, the thing that's gonna die right there as you're asking your question is whatever limitation you've made more real than your ability to choose. And I have so much, I not only have a lot of respect for that, but I have so much gratitude because I came out of that three-day body class transformed. And one of the conversations that she has about everything is, is being the transformational energy that you can truly choose to be with things. So I have a new class that I'm about, the new program I'm about to launch called Actualize Finance. I've, wanted, I've been wanting to create a program around re, like really reconfiguring your finances for a really long time. And now's the time. And I've been really looking at like, what is this? Like, how are we doing it? What are we introducing? All these different facets to it. And so the first thing that I'm actually gonna invite you to choose is a five day challenge that I put together for you that starts on Wednesday. Uh, maybe one of my teams on the video and can put the link in the comments. But so this five day challenge gets you to look every single day at a facet of finances, a facet of where you might be limiting yourself. It also gives you an action challenge. Because one of the things I started to realize that when is, is a, there's so, I have so many things I want to talk to you about. They're all trying to come out at the same time. Okay, we're going to try this. Oh, and you guys sent in questions, so I want to do that too. But let me just, let me riff. Give me, give me three more minutes to riff, maybe five. I see over and over and over in people's lives, in my life, where I buy the story of why I can't change something rather than actually choose what I can. And what I saw in this class this weekend and why I told you about the three-day body class and Shannon O'Hara is that she was willing, she is willing to be an energy that when you stand in front of her and you get present with your thing, transforms it. You become a different space, you have a different set of choices available to you, and in that moment, everything is different. And this is what I realized a lot of us haven't been willing to do with our financial reality. 
So my question to you is, are you currently surviving your finances? Are you surviving what you've already created or what you think other people are doing to you? Or are you taking up the challenge of who you truly are and beginning to transform your financial reality? Gary Douglas says all the time that if you don't, if you don't develop and nurture your awareness of what your choices create now and in the future, when you get to the future, you're not gonna have one. And so I had to really get, I had a lot, I've had a lot of come to Jesus moments over this whole thing for myself over the last year, and you guys have been present for a lot of them, um, where I had to really look at my financial choices and go, am I creating a future with this choice? With this choice to not do this, or this choice to do this, am I creating a future with this? And if I'm not, would I like to? Here's the gift, that's the gift of awareness of anything. Awareness of what, you, what you're doing that's shitty and what you're doing that's great. The gift of awareness is you now have the ability to make a different choice. And there's been a lot of, I get into a lot of conversations with people because I do so much facilitation around these things. And hi Susie, and I am gonna actually get into some of your questions. Um, but where I notice everybody gets stopped, if you are going to get stopped at something, it's always going to be at something you've made more real than your ability to choose something different. And so I want to be constantly having conversations, since that's why I'm so grateful you're here for these, around empowering us to know that we always know and that we always have another choice and that the moment you are ready or willing to make a choice to move from surviving into thriving, even though you have no idea what that looks like, no idea what the fuck that takes, the moment you make that choice, you now have created for yourself a different future. So let's dive into some of the questions that you guys sent me because I actually got eight of them, which I won't get to all of them. By the way, thank you guys so much for sending those in. When I send you an email and you send me questions, it helps us all so much, so thank you. And hi, I see all of you, I'm so grateful you're here. Um, if you want, tag a friend that you think could benefit from this conversation. Okay, so some of the questions here. So, um, <laughs> well, Fatma sent me in a question that was really simple, and it goes, what is being money? And guys, I can't even get into this, hi Gigi. I mean, we're gonna just barely do the tiny, tiny, tiny tip on this question, what is being money? But it's an epic question, and the first thing I'd invite you to ask is ask that. What is being money? Universe, show me what being money is for me. The second thing I'll say about this, because I can't do it justice in a 30 minute show, is friggin' go pick up the How to Become Money workbook. Do it, but don't just pick it up, go through it. And if do whatever you have to do to get through that workbook once, a, once every two weeks for the next year, seriously. It will transform what you're being with money. It will create different futures for you with money. I am starting a class where I'm gonna go through it every two weeks. If you can join me doing that as well. I've got two finance classes starting soon. Actualize Finance and a How to Become Money Workbook Choosers Club, which is gonna be great. It's gonna, but I mean, it's long, it's a commitment, but the people that went through it with me this last year um, are completely different. So that's coming. But what is being money? Being money is knowing being, perceiving, receiving, and choosing. That's being money, all right? Go do those things I just said. Okay, Brigitte, um, Crystal, you write about taking up the challenge of who you truly are, but how? How do I find out who I am? My brain won't wrap around this one. I'm so grateful for this because the first thing I wanna say about this question is your brain cannot wrap around the infinite being that you are and the infinite capacity that you have and the infinite knowing that you are and the infinite being you are and the infinite perceiving you have available to you. Your brain cannot compute that. And so that's why money isn't actually a brain conversation. Um, I have a good friend who, who is like, you're a money mindset coach. Why don't you call yourself that? And I'm like, well, maybe I will, but that's always tripped me up because, you know, I like telling the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God, because I'm so bright. And the word mindset has always been that one of those words where I'm like, that that's not actually true. Money isn't a mindset. Money is a willingness to be. The more I'm willing to be me, the more I don't 
even give a thought to what my choices are going to create emotionally in somebody else's world, meaning I don't let other people's feelings or thoughts or points of view control me at all. The more I'm willing to be as direct as I am, the more I'm willing to be as abrasive as I can be, the more I'm willing to be as joyful as I actually am, the more me I'm willing to be, the more money comes in. And that is being money. So who the taking of the challenge of who you truly are is going, if I were willing to be exactly what it says in the How to Become Money Workbook, right? The How to Become Money Workbook says, I am power, I am awareness, I am control, I am creativity, and I am money. And that right there is moving into living. That's moving into, we're talking about moving from uh, survival into, what did I say? Are you transforming your finances or surviving them? So being willing to be money and power and creativity and awareness and control is being the transformative catalyst to the creation of a different future and, and present for you right now. The things that don't create that, the things that create survival, the, the states of being that we choose that create survival are the states of need and the state of lack and the state of worry and the state of stress. And the thing about all of those choices is one, they don't feel like choices. And two, we've got all this proof in our world that we think justifies that choice of stress or that choice of worry. And on top of that, it doesn't feel like a choice. So we've put ourselves dynamically at the effect of the feelings we choose over the things we've created that we feel like happened to us. And so we've created this perfect trap of a thing. Um, and my, my invitation to you with all of that is if that's where you're sitting right now to run this clearing and go, what stupidity am I using to create stupidity with money am I choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and uncreate all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And that crazy statement has a website attached to it. You can go to theclearingstatement.com and get more information on that to find out more. But... So taking up the challenge of who you truly are is going, I am money, I am creativity, I am awareness, I am control, I just know that, I have everything available to me, what would I like to choose? That's taking up the challenge of who you truly are. As that space, there's no doubt, there's no fear, there's no I don't know how, there's no how at all. You're just like, well, whatever it takes, I'm gonna outcreate this, so what do I have available to me now? All of us, have money-making capacities available to us. They are completely different for each one of us. Your capacity for creation of money is completely different from my capacity. You don't have to have it up here to access it. You simply have to be willing to choose it. And so here's something else you might wanna run is how many reference points am I using to eliminate the choice of a different future am I choosing? and everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So a reference point is where you look for something. You look with your eyes, not your perceiving. Perceiving happens down here. A reference point is where you look for something that looks familiar so that you can reference it to the past to know that you're choosing the right thing. It doesn't have anything to do with true choice. True choice doesn't have anything to do with choosing the right thing. There is no right thing. There is only choice. But when you're looking for the right choice, which is how do I be myself, to please tell me how to be me so that I can do it correctly, is really what we're asking. Then you have to then twist yourself out of existence because the truth is you being you isn't right or wrong. It simply is. And it is the gift that will transform your financial reality. So that's my riff on that one. All right, we might get through these questions, let's see. Susie sent in a question and she said, first of all, thank you, and you're welcome, and thank you. And if you guys have friends that you know would benefit from this conversation, I'm inviting you to tag them. She goes, um, now I can't wait to get my hair done and choose the color I've always wanted to try, blue. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so my question, it seems like what I have happen in my life often and is happening right now is there's a promise of money um, this time through my friend's business and a big check we've been waiting on keeps getting delayed Money's always coming but not quite here yet and when it does it feels so small I see my friend and he feels the same. Um, no amount will be big enough. I Finally got myself distracted 
from that money working on my sales page for my bars sessions and I'm almost done and I feel excited, but I still ask for the check because well, that check is business capital that will establish me getting paid a salary for doing office work. So number one, money is always delayed. And number two, check is for my friend. Can I still help influence the outcome in either direction? Thank you. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna to say to this, and this is to any of you that are waiting on an inheritance, are waiting on a government check, are waiting on a tax check, are waiting on a big class, are waiting on any fucking thing ever in the history of life, never wait, always create. Never wait, always create. In my actualized business course that's happening right now, there's a really cool group of creators, and one of the invitations that I gave to them that I will give to you is the invitation to create 20 classes at the same time. Now, that sounds insane. But I took a call with Harris Omanovich. Harris Omanovich is a certified facilitator, originates in Slovenia, but travels the world doing foundation classes and three-day body classes. And he did a one-time call called Explode Your Access Consciousness Business. Now, what he talked about in that call applies to life and business. It, but one of the things he talked about is how when he was first creating his business, and this is you creating your life, creating your business, creating whatever, he actually made sure that he had a class happening every single night of the week, every single night of the month. So he had a class every single day, which is 31 classes in a month that has 31 days. And he said, no matter if nobody showed up or one person showed up, or 25 people showed up, he's like, I treated that class like it was the most important thing, like those two people were the most important people that ever came to a class, and that created the future. And I got so much out of that two minute segment out of his call. I One, one of the things I realized is that I, I slowed everything down so dynamically that I controlled, the, I was trying to control the results, and then, with that control, controlled the creation out of existence. The other thing I realized is that I wasn't willing to be that out of control. The other thing I realized is that I didn't think I could do that. Like it brought up all these points of view about limitations I was already functioning from that I'd hidden from myself because I'd never invited myself to the level of creation that is actually available. And so my curiosity for you is, are you inviting yourself to the level of creation that you have available? If you make one thing the answer, so we've already decided that this check is the business capital. This is the answer to the business capital. You really need to pock and pod yourself because everything you project and expect, guess what projections and expect, expectations create? Do they create what you'd like to have or do they create something else? Projections and expectations can only ever create separation, judgment, and rejection. And the thing or the person that you are projecting and expecting on has to leave you. Always, 100% of the time. So is that what you wanna create? Right now, that's what you're creating. Is that what you wanna to continue to create? So it isn't even that you can like go hiding that from yourself. I'm gonna pretend like I'm not doing projections and expectations. You literally have to choose to destroy and uncreate your projections and expectations because all they can create is separation, judgment, and rejection. And then you gotta destroy and uncreate your decisions and judgments and computations and conclusions because those also create the leaving of, the destruction of. Judgment and decision only create destruction. They never create anything else. So you gotta look at that and really look at how many decisions and judgments and computations and conclusions do you have in regards to money? Is it possible that all of those things are actually what's, what's shoving money out of your life? And so this is the weird part is that when you are doing decisions and judgments and computations and conclusions, you're actually creating survival of your finances, not thrival, not um, transformation. Transformation of your finances would be, I don't care where the fuck the money comes in, if that check comes in, great, but I'm having a different financial reality. Hi, Miss Mara. I'm gonna have a different financial reality and I don't care what I have to do, be, have, create, or generate to have that. 
I don't care what I have to do, I'm gonna have that. So if this check comes in, great, and if it doesn't, great, but I'm moving forward and we are gonna have something totally different here. That's moving into the transformation of your financial reality regardless of what shows up, and then guess what can show up after that? Money. Miss Anna Wislowska sent in a question. She said, hello, a few days ago, I had an awareness that I create money coming from a man in my life, but in my business, I create barely enough, or sometimes there are months when there's not enough. Hi, Rika, hi, Kathy. Um, what can I do to change it? So how many of you guys can relate to this? By a show of hearts, by a comment of a hell yeah, oh my God, that's me, whatever that is, how many of you guys can relate to this? I have money coming in from this person over here or this source over here, but when it comes to my business, I do like a little bitty trickle of money or none at all. Okay, so. Oh, so many things about this one. This should be its own show. So where do I wanna start with this? Well, let's go with the, yes, I knew there was a lot of you. Let's go with the topic at hand. So are you transforming with your business or are you surviving your business? Are you transforming your financial reality with your business? Are you transforming the world with your business? Or are you surviving what it is you first created? Yeah, a lot of you. Okay. so. How much energy are you using to control your business out of existence are you choosing? And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and How much energy are you using to control you out of existence are you choosing? When you look at, when you, you know what I look at with this whole like transforming and surviving and the creation thing that we talk about with, exactly, I see all of your comments, thank you. Um, When I look at what it takes to change a survival loop, because I was in survival forever. Yeah, most of us are surviving. Most of us are not choosing to actually thrive. Um, this is a choice I've made very recently in the last year. And it was really, for me, the conversation was more around succeeding. It's the same conversation though in a different word, right? Like my choice was like, I'm succeeding at this and I don't care what I have to do. Be, have, create, or generate. I'm doing it. So like in the next, month there's going to be some published material out finally um so so if you are just surviving your business you have to begin asking the question of what would it be like to give up survival this is what would it be like to give up survival and actually choose to transform this and thrive I can't remember which book I read of Gary Douglas's, but he talked directly about giving up survival. And one of the things he said is you have to be willing to give up survival as a point of view. And are you right now willing to give up survival as a point of view? And when I looked at that energy of giving up survival, what came up for me was all this energy around that felt like could feel like fear or fear of the unknown, fear of the no reference points, fear of not knowing how that was gonna look, fear of, but all of it was fear. And fear is what we call a distractor implant and fear always covers up potency. And as soon as I, I let all that energy come up, and one of the things you can play with in regards to fear is you can just destroy and uncreate all of the distractor implants. And if you need more information on that, go pick up the book, Living Beyond Distraction. But you can pock and pod all the distractor implants, and then, but then you have to ask after that, and what can I choose now? Because just simply clearing out something isn't enough. You clear it out and you make space, but now is the con creation conversation. Now what are you gonna move forward and create? What are you gonna move forward and choose now? What's available to you now? That has to be the next step because otherwise nothing new will get created because you're not asking for anything new. You're not choosing anything new. So what's actually possible here that I've never considered? And what choices do I have available here that I've never considered that would, would empower me to transform and create this into something totally different? Now that though, that I will say, that is you taking up the challenge of who you truly are. We are so powerful that we will pull in 
with our need for destruction, we will pull in destruction and survival. And so when you're committed to survival and destruction, that will be what shows up in your life. But once you begin to be willing to use that same creative capacity to pull in transformation, to pull in um, success, to pull in whatever it takes for you to choose and have the thrival that you'd like to have, you can also choose that. And this is where choice is your best tool. And I would like to say that, will it be comfortable? No, uh, it's not gonna be comfortable. But if what you're committed to is comfort, then you won't choose that. I, I mean, expanding beyond where I'm comfortable is something that I'm getting comfortable with. But in the beginning, it's incredibly uncomfortable. Like, it's incredibly confronting. It's incredibly, like, out of your comfort zone. But if what you would like to have is something different, who cares? Every great thing that I've ever chosen has been incredibly out of my comfort zone. And what's come out of that is more of me and more possibility and more money. Like, what would you have to be willing to choose to transform your finances, to transform your business, you know? So, yeah, so I don't really have an end point to that, but that's really where I would play with that is all the questions that I just tossed out. <laughs> and let me just see if there's one more that I can wrap up with. Um, Janine said, um, despite money flows increasing, I always hold a level of credit card debt I seem to be comfortable with. I often ask, how can I pay this off with ease right away, yet I haven't changed the pattern and it continues to be a heavy weight holding me down. So what I would say about past expenditures, which is, a, is another way to call your credit card debt, credit card debt has a really heavy energy to it and we could go into the word debt and what that actually means, but you've got to, again with like, what, am I, what would I have to be willing to choose to have this? What would I have to be willing to choose to have this? And one of the clearings that I use to clear out an unwillingness is I just go, what stupidity am I using to create credit card debt that's more valuable than me am I choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, fuck, fuck, all insurance, boys and beyonds. Unwillingness is an interesting thing. Um, one of the things that I play with with myself when I discover a whole patch of unwillingness, because I do, is I look at the future that making that choice would create for me, usually I'm resisting a greater future. Usually I'm resisting being great. I would say probably I'm always resisting being great. Um, because if I pay this off, then what? You know, Or I'm resisting the unknown, or I'm resisting having less definition. Because the thing about credit card debt is it gives you this sense of weird security. Like, do you even know who you would be without it? No. Do you even know what your life would be like if you didn't have a heavy weight holding you down? You'd be so spacious and so light with that choice available to you that you have no idea who you'd be and so you just don't choose it. So what future are you resisting with the credit card debt you're, cho you're choosing? And everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, fuck, fuck, all insurance, boys and beans. But we are nearing the end of our time and I do have another live. I'm gonna be going live right after this in the awareness challenge group if you guys would like to join me. Um, I'm adding on another challenge there. We're going to actually launch a five-day $20 challenge if you'd like to play with us. Um, but I'd invite you to share this with anybody that you get would require a really different financial conversation. And if you'd like to come play with me in the five-day challenge, and, and I don't think anybody's posted the link yet, but you can ask me for it. I'll get it to you. Um, and I would just invite you to look at, like, if, if just ask yourself the question, Am I surviving my finances or transforming them? If I were going to choose to transform them, what would I need to choose? And if you're surviving them and that feels really valuable to you, go, well, what's the value of just surviving and never thriving? And there was going to be so much more you can play with me on around that topic coming soon. But in the meantime, please, if you have a friend that you know would benefit, please share this with them. I'd be really grateful. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the Awareness Challenge group or in the challenge, or next week. Have a great, great week. Enjoy playing with this. I hope this creates some freedom for you.